everyone and welcome back to Xgate Dental. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh and we are here to discuss new procedures in the field of dentistry. We will provide interesting new cases to exhibit how doctors use our products to solve complicated dental cases. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us to stay up to date and let's get started. What we're gonna be looking at and discussing today is an overdenture on a bar. Now, the bar is based on five implants that are in the interior region. And on the implants, you can see multi-units, and then on the multi-units will be the metal structure. You can see all the implants are buckly inclined. That is one of the major problems in this case because they are buckly inclined. We want the bar to shift into the palatal region in order to get better aesthetics. You can see in this picture that the pillars of the bar are buckly inclined because they have to be in line with the implants, but the bar itself goes into the palatal area. So the smaller the multi-unit, the smaller the cone of the multi-unit, the smaller the pillar will be, and you'll be able to move the connectors of the bar more palatally. Therefore, we'll get better aesthetics and have more space for the overdenture, for the plastic, and for the opaque to mask the metallic color, and the end results will be beautiful. Now, the multi-unit, the part that takes all of the pressure, is the horizontal part. So you can make the cone a little bit smaller and still you'll have enough surface for the multi-unit to hold. It won't be a problem with forces. If you don't have the bars that are too large or too high, the movement of the screw will stay the same and everything will be fine. Now, why use smaller multi-units? Well, in the smaller multi-units that we used for this case, the overall diameter of the multi-unit is smaller, about 0.5 millimeters smaller. The standard multi-unit that we have on the market are about five millimeters in diameter. The multi-unit that we use here are about 4.5. The diameter of the body of the multi-unit is 4.5 and the pillar that we'll have will be smaller in its base, but not only that, the cone of the multi-unit is also smaller. In here you can see the cone is about two and a half millimeters high. In here you have 0.8 millimeters, which also allows for more surface area. You have much more area for the screw and you can make the pillar of the bar much thinner. The thinner the pillar of the bar, the less problems you have in the aesthetical regions. Now, the screw will be much closer to the horizontal part of the multi-unit and the height of the pillar also doesn't have to be that high. You can see a demonstration between the two multi-units. The first one is in the mouth and the second one is on the model. In the mouth, you can see the small cone of the multi-unit and in the model you can see it's the model of this patient. You can see the height of the cone that could have been if we used regular ones. You're probably wondering if we were to use a regular multi-unit will there be space between the bar and the gingiva? Probably not because the horizontal part of the multi-unit is still at the same height of the gingiva. You might even want it a little bit higher than the gingiva. You want some space between the gingiva and the bar because this way when the patient takes off the bar, he can clean these areas. You won't have inflammation. The lifespan of the implants will be much higher if you have less inflammation and you have more options to clean the bar. It's much easier for the patient because if the bar is right on the gingiva, it's hard for the patient to clean it and it won't clean itself. So the patient needs to have more options to clean these areas efficiently. You can use this type of multi-unit in other metal-based restorations because the base of the restoration would be metal. If the implant is buckly inclined and you have a problem in the buckle area and you don't have enough space for the ceramics, then you want to have a good aesthetic because you don't have enough for the opaque layer. You don't have enough for the translucent layer and you want the PFM to be as real as possible. Now, in this case, when you don't have enough space and you wanna make a PFM, for example, it would still be better if you would use smaller types of multi-units because you save space in these areas where you don't really need it and you can use the space for aesthetical parts. If you have enough, then it doesn't really matter, but if you don't have enough space, it would fit great in different types of work as well. You can use it on every type of metal-based work. So why use the regular ones? Well, the regular ones you'll probably use when you have a lot of space and you need to use it and when you have multi-units. You have the same type of sleeve and screw for the regular and angulated multi-unit. With the smaller types of multi-units, you have different sleeves and you have different heights. The angulated multi-unit doesn't fit with the screws and the sleeves of the straight one, which can cause a little bit of a confusion. Because of that, if you do have enough space, you should use the standard one so that the technician won't make any mistakes. If you don't have enough space and you want to have a better aesthetic, you can use this one if you don't need angulation. Choose the right one for each case, but know why you're choosing this. 
What are the pros and cons of every type of multi-unit? Now, we took the model from the previous slide and we changed one of the multi-units from the small cone to the bigger cone. We did it to show the case of when you have to close the multi-units. You can see in these types of multi-units that the cone is very small. The horizontal part of the multi-unit is still at the height of the gingiva. And here, the horizontal part is also at the height of the gingiva, but the cone is much bigger. So the base of the screw will be much higher and the diameter of the pillar will have have to be as the base of the cone. You can't make it smaller, so the pillar itself will be much bigger in diameter and in height. And as we talked about before, these implants are buckly inclined. So with this inclination, when you have the higher height of the pillar, you'll have much bigger buckle inclination in the aesthetical parts of the overdenture. We can use angulated multi-units, but first of all, we don't need it for a screw channel because you have an overdenture that fits on the bar. So you mask the screw channel, it doesn't matter where it goes with the angulated multi units in this case you have different problems because first of all angulated multi units are much bigger so in the buckle area you'll have the buckle bulge of the angulated multi unit then you'll have the same problem with the cone of the big multi unit the pros of using these types of multi units the standard ones that you have one kit for all of them so you can use the same sleeves you have the same libraries you have the same screws this is the biggest advantage of using these types of multi units now the best part is to know what type of parts to use for every scenario because in this case, we would use the small multi-units. The bar that we'll be able to make, the pillars will be very small. The height of the pillars will also allow us to be able to shift the main part of the bar more palatally. So we have more space for the aesthetic part of the denture. Now here you can see the end results. You see two dentures, the upper and the lower one. You see that you don't see any metal at all. You don't see the reflection of the metal because you have enough space for the plastic or for the opaque that closes and masks the metal part of the teeth for the gingiva. Many people would ask, why make a bar in the first place? Well, why not make a denture on the gingiva like they used to do and end it there? Now, we're still making dentures without implants, but the quality of life of regular dentures without implants is so much worse. It obviously can be done, but the results won't be nearly as great without implants. You always wanna have at least two implants. For the lower jaw, it's almost impossible to make a good denture without any implants. You can always find a place for at least two implants, almost always in the interior part between the mental nerves. This is what you wanna have, at least two implants to hold a denture so that they won't fall out. If you wanna do it on a bar or you wanna use both attachments or different types of attachment, that doesn't matter. You can use anything you want. With a bar, you have less problems with the dentures breaking. When you use both attachments or different types of attachments that are not connected, the pressure on the bar goes in one spot. So this spot can be the breaking point of the denture. If you use it on implants, for example, you have four spots. The forces on these spots are, are a little smaller because it goes on four implants. Now, if you have only two implants, it would be twice the height. In these cases, many times you don't make a metal substructure for the denture. So you have only four small dots that all the pressure is applied on. The denture itself is made from PMA plastic, which is acrylic. So the denture has a high chance of breaking. When you do the work on the bar, you have metal over the base of the overdenture. It has much less of a chance to break down because it's based on a metal carcass. And on the metal, you have all the plastic, all the acrylic, so the force is spread out. Thank you everyone that joined in to learn some new and interesting information. Make sure to stay tuned for more, and of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow. Thank you, and see you next time.